Hey man, want to learn the best shields and weapons to use after the update? Or maybe you just want to change it up for a new playthrough. This is Life Hacks with HMAC and I'm about to help you with that. I have hundreds of hours and have killed thousands of creatures in Valheim. And guess what? I've never died. Nope, not even once. If you die a little more often than you'd like, let's see if I can't fix that. If you like the tips in this video, slap a like on the bird chest. And if you want more funny life hacks like this, you know what to do. Hit the sub button, you can always unsub later, no worries. Now, let's get into the video. Let me know if this situation sounds at all familiar. You're traveling to the mountains to tame your very own pet wolf. You've gone at night because you heard somewhere <clears throat> that two star wolves can only be found at night and you'd like one for yourself. Hey, didn't you make this video already? I mean, yeah, but just stay with me. This video isn't about wolves, my friend. No wolf video? Unsub! As I said, you're traveling to the mountains at night. You make your way up without a care in the world, daydreaming about all the bosses you'll destroy with your two-star wolf army. This is freaking epic! But your fantasy is interrupted by a distinct howl. Oh boy, here's my chance! You see the two-star you've been dreaming of and you tunnel vision. You neglect to see the other wolves, two one-stars and a no-star. You also didn't watch my taming video, so you don't know how to lure them one by one. So within seconds, you're sworn- Ah, why do I die so much? Well, you're a noob. Call it a literary device. But how do I tame a two-star wolf? Dude, I thought I made it clear. I'm not giving tips on taming a two-star wolf. I am giving tips to help you understand combat better, especially given the recent changes to shields that were announced. If you want to make sure you're using the best shield and weapon for every situation, or maybe you've only used one weapon for hundreds of hours, listen to the following tips. First, let's give a brief overview of combat changes coming with Hearth and Home. Combat will be more closely related to food. You'll likely have stamina dominant, health dominant, and balanced food options. On top of that, blocking power will be dependent on total health and they're now giving us knockback bars. Oh, that sounds fun. I love going to bars. Not that kind of bar. A knockback bar is like your stamina or health bar, except, well, it's kind of the opposite. Whereas it's nice to have a full health bar, you don't want to see a full knockback bar. That means you'll be staggered, be unable to move, and probably take increased damage. But we'll see when the update arrives. A knockback bar is filled by blocking hits, so the more hits you block, the more it fills. Nice, real nice. So just another damn thing to worry about. Hey man, this is a Viking survival game. If you want smooth sailing, go back to Animal Crossing. Now that we've covered the changes we're aware of, let's get into shields. Tower shields. I know what you're probably thinking, man. Ugh, tower shields. They're so slow and clunky. I've never made one in my freaking life, and I'm not gonna start now, HMAC. And I just wanna say, I feel you, dude. I used to think that as well. There's a worse movement speed reduction, you can't parry with them, and they barely block more damage than the round shield counterparts. But here's the issue, and if you don't fix this, you can't call yourself a pro. You're using shields wrong. You don't need a tower shield for every fight, nor do you need a round shield for every fight. But when you use them in the right situations, you'll get the job done safer, you'll stay alive longer, and you'll avoid being called a noob. So that's pretty nice too. A tower shield is what you want when you find yourself swarmed with mobs. You'll block more attacks at once, and your knockback bar will not fill up as quickly. Because they announced that total blocking will be dependent on total health, I can also say that with a tower shield, you will be able to utilize more stamina dominant builds in the future. This means using a high stamina usage weapon like a club, or a weapon you don't have high skills for, is made a little bit easier. This is also important because you will use more stamina running due to reduced movement speed. Which, oh yeah, when you equip the tower shield, you get a 20% movement reduction. Unless you build a serpent shield, and that's only 10% reduction. So, what other situations do I recommend this? Well, a tower shield is nice when you play with others, and you want to play tank. You can absorb the brunt of the hits and aggro while your buddies lay down a ranged assault. Oh, tanks are dope. When did they add those? Just ignore them at this point. I also want to mention that a tower shield and club is a better option for people with low-end PCs, people who experience a lot of lag or low FPS, or players who just don't have the best reflexes. I mean, hey, Valheim attracts players of all ages. No shame in mentioning as you get older, your reflexes may degrade a bit. 
But dude, I got flicks for days. I want some fast-paced action. Then you'll really want to consider the next setup. Round shields or bucklers, paired with sword or dagger. Round shields are great because they allow you to parry. A parry is just a timed block. You can parry with most weapons, but parrying with shields is generally superior. Hey, two-handed weapon buff, where you at? Exactly. The reason you'd pick round shields over tower shields is you can parry attacks, which blocks 150% of what it would with a normal attack, and staggers the opponent, which puts the creature in a temporary state where they take twice as much damage and won't attack you. I'll also add that the bronze buckler blocks 200% when you parry, and I have a strong feeling they're going to add more bucklers with higher parry bonuses, so you should really practice your parries now so you can take full advantage. You also move faster with a round shield, so you'll be zooming. With the new food system, you'll probably want a little more health than you would with a tower shield. This means a little less stamina, so if you pair it with a sword or dagger, you'll be totally fine. Plus, you'll do even more damage than with a club and tower shield combo, because you'll deal twice as much when you stagger your opponent, and you'll get your hits in faster. I'm liking the sound of that, but be real with me. Is there anything I can do to move even faster? Well, there's a few things. Put away your weapon and your shield when not in use to avoid extra movement debuff. Do both at the same time by hitting R. And if shields are too slow of a defense for you, well, you can always roll by hitting right click in space. Just time it right with the impact of the attack and you'll avoid all damage. The only thing is, this is much more effective with bosses and large solo creatures. In a mob, you won't really be able to avoid every attack with this method. I will say, rolling takes a lot of stamina. I do not care, man. I'm going troll gear, dagger, and rolling, baby. Max speed all day. Hey, you do you, man. For me, I'll probably go round shield and sword. All right, I better go get my body and find that two-star wolf. Wait, you're going to walk there? Well, yeah. I mean, it should only take an hour or so. Well, you should really bring a pocket portal. Check out this video if you don't know what I'm talking about. And check out this one if you haven't tamed a two-star wolf yet. Until next time, this was HMAC, signing off.